2012 marked another year of aviation excellence for NAVAIR. The X-47 Bravo took to the air and to the sea on board USS Harry S. Truman. Plus, the P-8 Poseidon officially made its way to the fleet, and NAVAIR welcomed a new commander to its helm. Welcome to our Year in Review edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Crew. And I'm Kelly Schindler. Thank you for joining us. 2012 marked a year of major milestones for the Unmanned Combat Air System Demonstrator Program. The first X-47 Bravo aircraft arrived to Naval Air Station Patuxent River in December 2011, followed by a second aircraft in March. In July, the unmanned aircraft completed its first flight at Patuxent River. The 35-minute flight over the Chesapeake Bay was the first major step in preparing X-47 for operations at sea. Well, it's very important for the uh, Navy because unmanned, uh, an unmanned aircraft brings a new capability to, a, to an aircraft carrier battle group. So we're going to demonstrate that technology with the UCAS, demonstrate that an unmanned aircraft can be put on an aircraft carrier, can operate on the flight deck, uh, can fly around in the carrier airspace, and demonstrate that, that technology is a viable technology that the Navy to expand the, uh, the battle group's abilities. In December, the X-47 Bravo met the fleet for the first time hoisting aboard USS Harry S. Truman for initial testing at sea. The UCAS team rounded out a very successful year of testing by launching a second X-47 Bravo aircraft from a land-based catapult, proving the aircraft can structurally handle launching from an aircraft carrier. Later this year, the Navy will use the X-47 Bravo to demonstrate the first carrier-based launches and recoveries by an autonomous, unmanned aircraft. You can learn more about the X-47 Demonstrator by visiting our website at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta kicked off the year with a big announcement for the F-35 program. The Defense Secretary lifted a two-year probation period for the F-35 Bravo Lightning II. The Marine variant, capable of short takeoffs and vertical landings, was placed on probation by former Defense Secretary Robert Gates in 2011. Speaking in front of hundreds at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Panetta praised the F-35 program and emphasized the importance of Stovall technology in future military operations. American troops have long gone to battle, secure in the knowledge that we command the skies. This fifth generation fighter is absolutely vital to maintaining our air superiority. In December, the F-35 Bravo Lightning II completed its 1,000th developmental test flight. The aircraft is continuing flight tests and evaluation at NAS Patuxent River. The Navy's newest maritime reconnaissance aircraft made its debut in 2012. The P-8 Alpha was officially introduced to the fleet in March during a rollout ceremony in Jacksonville, Florida. The ceremony also served as opening day for the P-8 Alpha Poseidon Integrated Training Center. The multi-mission aircraft will work with the BAMS UAV to improve maritime surveillance and warfare capabilities. The P-8 is replacing the aging P-3 Orion, which has served the fleet for 50 years. The Marine Corps is retiring another aircraft with nearly 50 years of service. A ceremony at Fleet Readiness Center East marked an end to the Department of Defense refurbishment program for the H-46 Sea Knight helicopter. The aircraft is being replaced by the V-22 Osprey a tilt rotor helicopter capable of flying like a plane. The Frog is described as a reliable workhorse for the Marine Corps. The H-46 assault support aircraft was always there. If you need beams, if you need band-aids, you need ammo, reinforcements, or you needed to be, the wounded to be evacuated, the H-46 was the first responder in most instances. FRC East will support the V-22 Osprey and will continue to provide maintenance for the State Department H-46 helicopters. Marines made history with the first ever deployment of a cargo unmanned aircraft in the combat zone. Officers and Marines from the VMU-1 Watchdogs operated KMAX for six months in Afghanistan. The heavy lift helicopter was used to deliver supplies, including food, water and gear, to troops on the ground. Remotely operated, KMAX reduces the need for ground convoys and lessens warfighter exposure to IEDs and hostile fire. NAVAIR ended the year with a new commander at its helm. Vice Admiral David Dunaway assumed command of Naval Air Systems Command in September. He relieved Vice Admiral David Archizel, who retired after more than 40 years of service. 
Speaking at the change of command ceremony at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Vice Admiral Dunaway laid out his plans for the future of NAVAIR. Now my plan of attack is pretty simple. I plan to be a steward of the taxpayer dollars that we get from Representative Hoyer. I plan to apply the best technical and business practices to the programs that are executed by Secretary Stackman. And I plan to deliver the best integrated and interoperable warfighting capabilities known to man to the CNO so he can organize, train, and equip our battle forces as they go over the horizon. You can read the full version of Vice Admiral Dunaway's Commander's Intent on our website at www.navair.navy.mil. Thank you for joining us for our end of year review. We leave you with a few of the best images from 2012.